The ironic thing about Castlemaine Bendigo is that uh, it was gold was discovered here, a mineral. So it became very big for European people. Gold was found. It had no use in the Aboriginal community. They, they didn't use gold. They, 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 the kids used to pick it up and throw it at birds. You know, and that's what it was like around here. You could pick it up off the ground. Shiny rock. Oh yeah, it's nice and heavy. You might be able to hit a bird with it. That's about it. Because um, Parks and Wildlife did a study on it for us, uh, uh, some research, and they come back and they told me that this one is extinct, fully gone. And three of the skins, that one over there and that one in the corner, are highly endangered. Uh, that one there I think is the yellow-footed rock wallaby. So for us Aboriginal people, we hate seeing these streams polluted. You know, we looked after it for thousands and thousands of years. When Captain Cook put his anchor down, this place was heaven. And it was pristine, everything about it. And in a very short time, you know, trees started to get cut down. Aboriginal people just seen... The reason why they looked after it, because this is our mother. When, the, when Captain Cook said, who owns this land? Not us. The, she owns us. It was a stupid question to them. And, and so having your, to own your mother, you can't own your mother. You end up, you come from your mother, and we, we believe we go back to our mother. You know, and we travel that journey, then we come back again. So I arrived to the camp yet last night, and we set up the tents, we get ready for dinner and everything, and then we rest. Then we listen to the Ron tell the story about the Aboriginal people, and how the kangaroo, the immun and everything, and then the other traditional Aboriginal tradition that the one that he talked about is reminds me of what my culture and my grandma told me the story. So that was really interesting and then I tell him, I explain it to him and this is similar to my culture and my tradition. So yeah, that was really good. We learn about a lot about indigenous people, like Aboriginal people and we, we had a, a story over there they said a story about how you know. Yeah, we had so fun and it was a good experience for us. Yeah. Uh, oh, I joined the camp to listen a story about uh, indigenous people and we have fun a lot on, in, in camp and we walk around in the forest and that's so fun and we get more experience here. Yeah. On this camp I have enjoyed learning how to set up a tent and just enjoying the whole camp experience like not having a toilet or shower and using a long drop. I've learnt about the like the rocks that they use to carve stones and um, all the stories of the Aboriginal times that Ron's told us. Well today we've been to several Aboriginal sites, um, landmarks kind of thing all around this little area. 
we like learnt how they sharpen rocks and all that to make like, spears and boomerangs. The most enjoyable thing I got out of this camp was learning about the Aboriginal people, like their culture and their way of life before all the white men came over. Yeah. I started off telling them all the history of, uh, of this area. I tried to put them in uh, and, and think about how it would have been for Aboriginal people and give them a sense of how old they are. So um, I, I, I got them to picture themselves sitting on the hill right above us and watching Mount Terengau and Mount Franklin erupting and the story, I didn't tell them the story about them but I told them what happened you know, that, um, and that's still a, 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 a dream time story, creation story from here. And I think for them to get their head around that, yeah that is old because they were here and seeing volcanoes in Australia. So the sites that remain are more the permanent sites of you know, well sites and rock uh, engraving sites and um, uh, axe sharpening sites. So uh, it does make it hard around here, even though um, compared to where I come from, where you walk along the river and there's a, you know a whole uh, mound of dirt jutting out the side of the river and you know with red rocks all over them and you know that that was a kitchen area or a midden site. So them really hadn't survived around here, and that, that, yeah, which is sad. Um, but you can you can also talk, and, and I was telling them the importance of um, minerals to to the Aboriginal people here, even though they didn't use gold, but they used a lot of the stone and the ochre from here was was so important because all the other tribes needed it. That was their trading, what they could trade. So. Minerals was important to the Jara people as well as, you know, later on when the gold was um, struck. So that's, um, they were pretty uh, amazed at that. It's really important for them to know these stories because uh, uh, coming from other countries, uh, especially for us educators, uh, all, all, all Aboriginal educators that I know are really trying to put the message across that the country's going to get more populated, um, we've got to start looking after, you know, we, we look at the country as our mother, so um, how do we look after her better? Because early years of settlement haven't, you know, you look at the state of the, the rivers now, um, all the chemicals that were used and the thing, the mistakes we made. So the more population we, we get in, the, the more draining it is going to be on, the, on, on our mother, the, the earth. So it's that too, I, I, that's my biggest thing. Um, let's look after uh, the country better, you know. Um, be careful what we do, we've got to be more careful with and look after it better. That's, for me, that's the biggest thing for all Australians. Mm -hmm.